but the guys made the right arrangements of getting the IT onto the table. Before, before we go into the Q&A, two, three pointers. With your permission, I'll... Just give me two minutes to take you through a rapid thing about the globalization part. We all live in an era today of technology where everything, right from emails to Skype to WhatsApp to Facebook, X, Y, Z. In a nutshell, the practice of law today, what is being practiced, is completely ill-equipped. That's why I raised my hand. I'm still going to take it further. On the one hand, we have the Prime Minister talking about the digital India, the startup India, the innovation India, make in India, X, Y, Z, all, all looking at the future. Mind it, 2019, we are looking at reaching 50 in terms of the global index. And in the morning, Amar spoke about the global parameters. In fact, there are 10 parameters. I've been part of that panel where I've given 413 suggestions to the government of India on ease of doing business. And PhD is the only one which produced a paper, booklet, which was given to the government of India on how to do business. You spoke about 178, only Somalia and possibly Pakistan are under us. Not a great feeling for all of us. Let's be mindful of the fact that even legal process outsourcing, which is our biggest strength, is there. Unfortunately, it's not getting addressed properly under the BCI rules. It should be completely dealing, because that's our real bread and butter. Globalization and not localization is the key today, what you touched about. We can't be inward looking. I'll just take some examples. In internet binds us the world today. We spoke in the morning. Automation of legal services. In fact, Chandra, I still remember the privacy and data meet where you were not allowed to bring into the parliament the, the laptop, which you are bringing it here. Huge developments in the data security, privacy, which is again a buzzword for any, any law firm today. World is moving towards eco-consciousness. The green, go green buildings and the kind of paperless office, what we are talking about. Why I'm raising all these points is law is no exception. And that's where is my point that we are talking about protectionism. How much more time do we want for protectionism? Don't you think that we are procrastinating the entire issue? Believe me, I am a strong believer in this, that if we were to be given another 20 years to our own fellow professionals out here, still we will not possibly bring in the kind of urgency that is required. So we need that push. That push will only come in case we are thrown into the water with some safeguards, maybe with a life jacket on, wherein we can swim. So that's the pitch with which I want to start. World is today into a virtual office concept. So it's not that you know we need office spaces. People are working right from airports to every, every other place. Powerful mobile devices, software, and many others. To only seek protection, therefore, for lawyers in India is not a pragmatic view, according to me, and generally many of the people. We must encourage, therefore, young lawyers, including paralegals, to embrace technology, which they are already doing. That's where we are also making an effort. I am representing Indian National Bar. I am working with Manoj and many others. We are also giving a pragmatic view to the government of India, to the BCA, on what are the steps that requires to be taken to open up this industry. Personally, as I said, I feel that the industry ought to open up with safeguards so that there is a level playing field for us in India as well as foreign players who come in. We work together. Taking the example of a bamboo shoot, it's not easily visible initially, but after a particular period of time, it rises to great heights. We need that bamboo shoot concept in our country today. With that, maybe I'll have an interactive Q&A session with all of you. And since I can see everybody a bit dazed, could I throw a question? 
to perk all of you up. We talked about liberalization. Can anybody tell me the exact date of liberalization when it started in India? And mind you, I'll give you some prizes also. I hope I made the right, right announcement about the prizes. Wonderful. Yeah. Otherwise, I would be out of pocket. What kind of the prize you are going to? <laughs> <laughs> sir, prize is invaluable, sir. So, was it 28 Feb 1991? Come again? 28 Feb 1991? Mm. Somewhat closer, huh? Still not. Maybe some other try. No, because we st it's written in so bold, liberalization. Give me the exact date of liberalization. Anybody? Sorry, you missed the mark. <laughs> Come again. <Your> <laughs> Come on, lawyers. Put on your... No, that's April Fool's Day. Uh, it's a date, sir. I'm asking the date. <laughs> Pile. 1991 is correct. Please give me the exact date. Dekho, aap logo ke dimaag... No. No. <laughs> now that's all, you know, random thinking. And, okay, let me give you a KBCQ. We just completed 25 years. <laughs> any, any more? Any more answers? Any, it was 24th of July, 1991. And we just completed 25 years of liberalization. Maybe with that we start. Uh, can I have a simple kind of an opinion poll with all of you? Who all, who all are in for, you know, foreign law firms or lawyers so-called, or the Indian market opening up? So I can see an overwhelming one there. Any specific reasons for it? Let me come down and I, I take it up with all of you. Yes, no problem. These are my... Questions. Okay. I start from this place. Okay. Should I from say from here or? Please, sir, please. Please be seated. Uh, difficult to sit. I'm sitting in uh, the last two hours. But answer should be quick, crisp. Answer is quick because of the two issues involved in India. A, this is the government of India commitment in the WTO to open the sector, including the legal sectors. We are postponing in last 20 years because of the selfishness of many people not to allow it. That is the one reason. B, why we need it? We should understand that why we are sending our children to go to the abroad to read the law which is they are not going to practice here because we thought that in Indian education may not be sufficient for my children to do LLM from here or go for LLB because many people are duly qualified. They did their LLB and LLM from UK, come back to India and practicing. And many children of all the top lawyers being sent to the Howard and also many good places because they have a money they can. They are coming back doing the practice. Now, third situation is it is a f admitted fact that legal education even in a foreign good company, countries is better than India. Now come to India, why we need to open a sector? A, the practice we are doing in India after liberalization, only four and five companies, why they have developed to be known as a big four and big five? Because of the talent, because of the relationship, because of the networking, because of the capital intensive approach. Remember one thing, because of the capital intensive approach and their good networking with their forefathers brought them and handed over to them is a family oriented organization. So, As somebody. To, so one of the reasons so, is so that we need a, to a, a, no, 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 One by one. Yeah. Uh, we have listened to you just, just to listen because, because I am the person yeah who brought up from the small place in the UP mm -hmm. and worked with international law firm. And being in a board of the international law firm and formed the Indian operation indirectly for the international law firm. I will not take the name. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting with the board, with the London law firm, 
in the Dubai and discussing in their psyche and reason for the, and why I admire and why I joined and why I left, I started my own law firm. I have learned a lot from them. A. B. Their way, their way of yeah. treating the people and managing the people is thousand times better than the way our people are managing. Still, we are a partner-centric practice as well as founder-oriented firm. A big law firm was divided between the two in the name, not in any other thing. Still, they want to create. Foreign law firm will bring a strong cultural change. I don't agree with phase one, phase two, phase three. This is not the project which has to be implemented phase-wise based on cash flow. I'm a project finance lawyer, so I can understand the f impact. If you are not mature enough, even to implement everything in, in a one phase, that means we are not, Confident. we are hypocrite. I, I am very blunt to say we are hypocrite. Do you think that we need a cultural integration today? If my son is going, and if you are moving all over the world, you cannot move with professionally in India? This is all talk of nonsense because not to permit them to come. B, not to allow in litigation is itself is wrong. Today, we are disputing the issues which have a global impact, like environment. Read the environment law. Basic principle of environment laws is not a social justice. It is scientific issues. What is relevant in China? It is relevant into India. Our judiciary should understand what is happening in USA, what is happening in UK. In one of the case, in Bombay High Court, American and UK court decision were cited because Bombay is a, frankly speaking, is a more mature, even a judiciary to understand. They will bring. Even a contract executed under the English law, they can be, in fact, in, 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 in force in India, so you need a lawyer from the foreign lawyers to come to the court as a witness because this has so, so taking your point maybe we'll need, we'll, okay in a democratic set we need to give others also a chance but your points are very meritorious the point that you're making the the point that you're making is it's high time that you know we we give the world a larger view and especially india also and since we have so much of talent i believe one of the fundamental points which has not been raised by anybody out here is our biggest plus strength is our english speaking strength why China has failed and why India will succeed? Why do we look inwardly? We should look outwardly. Pile your thoughts, please. Okay, so Anand. Anand. Anand Prakash, is he here? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's here. here. He's having his tea. So Anand, please. Anand, with your permission, can I make some radical comments? <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so um, I disagree slightly with uh, the, the gentleman here. Um, so while I think liberalization is great on every front, but I think as usual we've been caught napping. And um, I think there are some amendments that are required and those are urgently required. So the first thing that I want to say is, you know, something that Chandar had touched upon as to why we are family-run businesses and not real equity partnerships. Not all firms. No, no, I'll tell you. I, uh, uh, Anand, I'll tell you something. Uh, and, uh, and there's a reason. It is not so much by design as much as the market demands it. Now, one of the reasons is the 3x billing concept. Those of you who are unfamiliar with that, we can talk about it later. But the reason why it works for consulting firms and it doesn't work for law firms is because of the lack of value billing. So that amendment's going to have to come in in some form or the other under the Advocates Act or under, and under the Bar Council rules. So remember that we're going to be competing with firms that have contingency fees and that have value billing. And we have neither. Okay, so that's one aspect that needs to be looked at. The second aspect, which also Chandar uh, touched upon, and sorry, sir, I have my back towards you, but the second issue is real estate. 
there's absolutely no conse consonance between real estate cost and our services fee. <coughs> so those, of, uh, those people like me who are lucky to have buildings that are amortized, we all, and remember, we all need to be near courts. And we can't afford it. Supreme Court and, you know, young, lo smaller law firms, we're not going to be able to. Luckily, the government's thinking about the Model Tenancy Act. We're going to have to push for that to happen if you want real practices and those to be able to compete. That's the second thing. The third thing that I want to talk about is funding. You know, you have all businesses in which today funding can come in at various levels. But law firms can't because we can't engage with non-lawyers. And that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. But why are we not thinking about funding for lawyers to lawyer funding, whether it's seed, it's angel, venture, private equity? Why are we not thinking of an opportunity for funds to be created, to be able to bring, and let me tell you, it's not just small firms like mine, but at every level, if you have to compete, remember an Amarchand doesn't compete with a smaller law firm.